गुड मॉर्निंग नमस्ते टू एवरीवन नमस्ते सिमिलर विधि वेलकम टू द मॉर्निंग सेशन सो वी हैव बीन डिस्कसिंग यूएचवी 3 एंड इन यूएचवी 3 वी वर डूइंग द प्रैक्टिस सेशंस एक्सरसाइज 1 एंड 2 एक्सरसाइज 1 ऑब्जर्विंग द सेल्फ बाय द सेल्फ वी कंप्लीटेड कंप्लीटेड डजंट मीन दैट इट्स ओवर एंड डन विद completed just means we covered it but now we have to keep doing the observation throughout observing the feelings referring to the natural acceptance that part has to continue and while doing that now we were talking about exercise 2 observing the self and the body and the world outside by the self so in this we came up to step 6 we have been talking about step 6 just to briefly recap step 1 we were just observing these two distinct separate identities the self and the body i can see that i exist because i can see the activities going on within me the feelings the thoughts the expectations that are going on i can also see that the body exists because i can read the sensation through the body that was step 1 in step 2 we were trying to see this interaction between the step and uh, between the self and the body and we said that this interaction is only in the form of information nothing physical is transferred during this interaction because i give some instruction to the body the body follows there are many sensations in the body i read some sensation and then i decide what to do and then give the instruction so either way instruction is also information reading the sensation that is also getting this information from the body so this is only a transfer of information nothing physical in step 3 we tried to see who is the decision maker who is deciding this whole exchange of information between self and body and it is i who is deciding the body is going along with my decision so i decide what instruction to give when to give depending on whatever i think is important and then out of all the sensations in the body i read only those that i am interested in only those that i think are important when i think they are important otherwise i don't read them and i am not aware of them at all so i am the decision maker i am the one who's deciding then in step 4 we said we try to observe the distance between the self and the body so this we could tell by sensations in the body so if there is some sensation i am reading in the body whether it be pain or itching or whatever the sensation may be i can see that i am not the sensation i am reading it i am not that sensation i can also see that i am not in that sensation i am not bound to read it I have a choice so i am not the sensation i am not in the sensation but i am reading the sensation from a distance this we tried to observe in step 4 then in step 5 we were checking out how we read these sensations what is the basis so first of all what are these sensations sensation can be within the body emanating from the body itself or it can be from the outside world in the outside world it could be the physiochemical state of things the phys- physical facility outside or it could be the behavior of another person when i am interacting with them so these are the three sources of sensation which i can read with the help of the body 
Now, out of these sensations, when I read whatever sensation I read, I don't just read that sensation and leave it. I read the sensation, that also is my choice. You have to try to see there is some reason I read because I think it's important. When I read it, I give some meaning to it. This meaning that I give depends on my own ideas, my own preconditionings, whatever I have accepted about various realities. Based on that, I give some meaning. And when I give this meaning, then either I am influenced by this sensation or I am uninfluenced. Either I remain happy with my own feeling or my feeling is changed because of this outside effect. So either I respond or I react. So if my acceptance is based on understanding, then I respond to the situation. Then I can see the situation as it is and I have no change in my feeling which is ensured. I have the right feeling, the feeling that is in line with my natural acceptance. That has already been ensured within me. And with that feeling, I am able to see things outside the way they are, see the sensation in the body for what it is, and I respond. All this is happening within the self. Then if I choose to express my response outside, then I use the help of the body and express it. Similarly, if I don't have understanding, if I lack understanding and I have just accepted something to be true, I have assumed it to be true without knowing, then I may respond, I may react. If it's to my liking, I may respond to the situation. If it is not to my liking, I may react. So it becomes very indefinite. Either I respond or I react. I could be Comfortable inside, I could be uncomfortable. I may be happy within, in harmony within, or in disharmony within. So from step five, we gathered that we must be aware of these sanskars, which are leading to this associating meaning. Because for everything, I'm associating some meaning. In fact, that's how I am reading the sensation also because I think it's important. It's important because somewhere I have accepted that this is important for me. Somebody else may not think it's so important. So it is my sanskar. Um, we try to see this. Then we moved on to step six. In step six, we were observing this response or reaction. And we were trying to see, you know, how it is that when my sanskar is based on assumption without knowing, then I'm not able to ensure that right feeling within. I'm not able to ensure continuous happiness within. So I keep trying to look for this happiness from outside. So whatever the sensation is that I'm reading, I get influenced by this. My decisions are influenced. So if I like the taste of the sensation, I become happy. It's actually excitement because I cannot sustain that state. I want to continue it, but I'm not able to. And I crave for it. I feel clinging, I feel attachment. And that's not a happy feeling either. So this is reaction inside. If I dislike the taste of the sensation, then I become unhappy and I want to discontinue. So I have an aversion. I avoid, I ignore what we call. So this is also reaction. 
And then if I choose to express it outside, then I use the help of the body. Otherwise, I may keep reacting inside. But even if I don't choose to express it through the body, still the reaction inside bothers me. I'm unhappy. It causes me discomfort. So I want to get out of that state. Then in step 6b, we try to see how it would be when your sanskar is based on understanding. How it leads to a response. So if my sanskar is based on knowing, on right understanding, then I have the right feeling. I understand relationships. I see my relatedness with other units. I have the right feeling for all. And I continue to be in a state of harmony and happiness based on the feeling that I have now, which I can ensure. Now, when I read a sensation outside, I will still read the sensations that I think are important. Now, when I read the sensation outside or within the body, then I will always choose to respond in a way that is mutually fulfilling. Not just fulfilling for me, but I will see the other side. I will see things as they are and I will try to respond in a manner that is mutually fulfilling for both. I will be able to see that the feeling that the other person is expressing is just indicating his or her state the state he or she is in. And they can only share what they have. They can't share what they don't have. So if they don't have the right feeling at that time, how can I expect them to give me the right feeling? They will only express whatever feeling they have inside. So if they are angry, they express anger. If they have resentment, they express resentment. If they have jealousy, they express the jealousy. So I can see that the other is lacking understanding. This is the cause. So I can see that this doesn't need to change my feeling. My feeling is ensured. And with that right feeling, I am now able to be of help to the other person. I am myself in a steady state. And I can rightly evaluate the situation of the other. And in fact, be of help to them. Help them to understand. Or at least have concern for them to the best of my competence, I help them out. Similar is the case of physiochemical changes in the environment. I see the state for what it is and I respond accordingly. So if it's raining, I don't grumble and complain. Rather, I just take my umbrella and go about my business. I respond to the situation. And even if it is something within the body, I don't overreact. I just see that, okay, there is some disharmony in the body. What can I do to correct it? Because I have a feeling of self-regulation. I have a feeling of responsibility for the body. So I do what it what is required to correct this disharmony. So whatever is happening outside, that doesn't influence my state of happiness. This is what is self-organization, being self-organized. So based on this right understanding within, I have the right feeling, right thought, and it is not influenced by the outside. I continue to be in harmony, in happiness. And whatever external input I am getting, I evaluate it correctly. My feeling is definite. And I am always clear about my relationship, my responsibility. I am clear about my relationship and responsibility with the body. See, I am looking at things holistically. So I can see my relationship and my responsibility with the body. 
that I need to nurture the body, protect the body, use it correctly. I also see my relationship and my responsibility with other human beings. So my behavior is in line with justice in the relationship, looking at mutual happiness. You can uh, go to the, uh, this is the next slide. So, um, in the case of nature, because I can see my relatedness with nature also, when I interact with nature, when I work with the rest of nature, I look at not just my prosperity, but also I am careful to and I have concern for the nature also to be able to maintain its prosperity. So I do something for that. And when I'm participating in the larger order, I work towards a humane society. I stop complaining about others. I see my role, my participation, and I work with that. So if I'm properly evaluating whatever input I'm getting, I can choose to be mutually fulfilling. And in every situation, I can respond to the situation. I can behave responsibly in every situation. And yesterday we tried to give some, a small assignment. Um, what if there was a condition that, you know, there is all this talk again and again that Corona is resurfacing, recoming, and this and that. And now those two doses are not working. Then I start thinking every small symptom that I have, it could be Corona. Right now, it seems a faint thing because we don't see that many cases. But as the cases start increasing, my anxiety also starts increasing. So does this happen? And can we observe this for sensations in the body? How we give some meaning and then we are in disharmony. Good morning. Good morning, ma'am. Yeah. Good, mo good morning, everyone. Uh, in that condition, it was actually it happened to me that means uh, I was suffering from a high fever during that time. And uh, at that time, I have taken already two doses. But <laughs> still, there was a rumor uh, that it is not working. So we should be careful about and uh, without spending any time, uh, we must go for paracetamol-like things so that the temperature could be arrested in a, in a required manner. So I used that also, but I found that yes, uh, next, some after some days, I analyzed myself and I thought that yes, normally it, it may happen. It may be cold mm -hmm. and the fever, it may happen otherwise, than the corona and it could also happen so anyway but people, uh, i was panicked and therefore i also started uh, taking the paracetamol thing mm -hmm. so in that case i understand that um, uh, it, it is the apprehension it is, it goes with without understanding right understanding so Mm, uh, I should have waited for some time, but I, without spending any time, uh, I started taking the, uh, which is not, not to be done like that. So yeah. This was, all of this, nice. was my... this was your observation. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. See, 
in fact if you see a lot of times we don't understand the situation but we do just it's a reaction like you said so mm. you start giving paracetamol we don't even realize that paracetamol is no cure paracetamol is just going to bring the fever down so it is like we keep saying no if there is a wound on the body i cover up the wound with a bandaid now i don't see the wound but it is there i haven't done anything to fix the wound it's mm. just that i have made it invisible to me so that i don't see it but that doesn't mean it's not there so similarly you know fever is a symptom of some disharmony in the body and if i am decreasing the symptom it's not taking care of the problem no oh. so what happens in fact if you you know really study it you will find that during a fever it is a body's natural way of responding to an infection inflammation whatever during a fever the white cells that you know um take care of the infection they can move faster to the site of the infection they can take care of the infection get rid of the infection faster in the case of a slight increase in temperature so this is the body's own self organization own mechanism for trying to get back into harmony but if i don't understand it in panic i just try to drop the fever down but that doesn't help the situation yes. but we do this we we do this because we feel somewhere satisfied that okay now the temperature has come down things are normal but may not be isn't yes. namaskar madam namaskar to all namaste so for this type of uh, hypothetical uh, situation that uh, observing sensation uh, my uh, association of meaning to this is maybe due to corona effect of that uh, covid or may not be due to that generally i associate meaning like that madam because in general also the fever may come due to some other reason but maybe due to corona is there na that's why that causes me some percentage of fear hmm. because many cases i am observing uh, dying and all these things uh, so definitely they are not based on uh, i can say uh, 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 not right understanding to some extent based on assumption so mm-hmm. definitely uh, am i happy and happy means definitely some percentage of unhappiness is there mm-hmm. so i uh, react to some percent definitely so uh, even then Uh, i can uh, tell my mind so if if i am affected then what would happen the medicine related to that i may take but even then some percentage of reaction is there madam <laughs> i i can uh, assess <laughs> assess my competence <laughs> that is true for most of us because somewhere we are still clinging to the body yes madam yes madam even the information we may have self is separate body is ah, yeah all of that but in living when it comes to a real life situation then we can see you know our sanskar our strong belief that takes over yes madam yes nice this was an example so that we can try to reflect on situations that we face you know every now and then thank yes, you yes madam because it is fatal uh, that intensity is more suppose uh, some diseases if it is not fatal uh if there is a cure uh, then uh the uh, reaction may be less uh, even then uh, that is a reaction uh yeah. you know madam for any illness whether the body succumbs to that illness and dies or whether the body comes out of it depends on the state of the body also ah oh, yes madam yeah yeah and condition therefore, of the body Ah, the condition of the body, and therefore it depends on my state. Yeah, yeah, madam. Huh. So you will, you may have heard this. 
those who don't have issues like high blood pressure diabetes blood lifestyle disorders mm -hmm. they tend to do better with corona people did pranayam it seemed to help people yeah yeah um ate balanced food they had the right intake the right routine uh they took various herbs for building the immunity they were able to do better yeah. so you will find that not that there is no cure i am not able to see my role my responsibility in that mm -hmm. i do many things to mm -hmm. keep the body in a better state so that it doesn't come down with that illness very bad that the body is able to come out of it yeah madam good morning madam uh, i have a small doubt in this context say yes. let us say for a two, a two month old child which is suffering from fever or any disease like this mm -hmm. how will the self and the body control the activity if we are not re relying on to medications yeah see um to some extent we think that you know this is all just i have to do something about it but there is a certain process which is going on a process of what we call self organization there is a self organization in every unit and so also is the case with the body now if you really go through it you will find that majority cases to a large extent the baby has immunity from the mother's antibodies at least for the first 6 months of life right usually of course there are exceptions but the important thing is not that i am just going to sit back and not do anything important thing is for me to understand what is the significance of what i am seeing in the child you know so of course child we don't expect to do something about it it is the parents responsibility no to take care of the child because the child the, the child is small no but the child has also got a self right yes there is there definitely should, a self there should involved. be a relation there should be a mapping or relation between the self and the body in the child also uh, there is a self in the child also but if you see when it comes to the lower activities of the self you know the feelings the thoughts the expectation that skill part or what we learn in a lifetime that we are not able to recall when we go from one lifetime to another so now you have to start fresh isn't it you have to learn that's why you have to learn the language every time otherwise you can say that you know i learned my language is so many you know lifetimes before why do i have to learn it again because somewhere i forget these things they are not so important to me so i forget them i don't recall them now i have to restart so i have to rebuild that okay so for a small child it is not possible but the parent can take responsibility parent can understand and take responsibility and there also i would say that not that the parent will not do anything about it and refuse to take medicine but use it in a judicious wise way that where it is helping the child no okay, okay. and trying to see by what is the cause of the fever not just panicking and trying to just bring down the fever but seeing okay where is the you know what is causing the fever let us try to fix that Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Good morning, Didi. Good morning. Good morning to everyone. Uh, Didi, what I can uh, understand with this present uh, discussion? So mostly, I think uh, uh, the preconditioning part is very less in context of the child, so that I think the fear or assumption. will not be there as far as a child is concerned hey um here also i would say it is more like an assumption we are assuming something about the child also thing is child for the child this journey is not starting now fresh 
this is an ongoing journey so you have to remember even though you know these feelings thoughts uh, logic all this part may you know the child may not be able to recall but what travels with self from one journey to another is the sanskar so that sanskar is traveling with that child now the child is born with those sanskars isn't it so based on those sanskars child may not express everything but it will show up in some behavior sometimes so for instance and it also has to do with the experience in this lifetime don't forget this lifetime also so small children you know, when the small baby newborn baby cries for hunger for milk now if the parents if the mother is tuned into the baby tuned in meaning paying attention to the baby and the mother feeds the child quickly the child develops that feeling of trust develops that has that assurance that the need will be taken care of but if the parent doesn't respond now the experience again and again this kind of experience will lead to this assumption in the child that you no know, nobody cares and this such children grow up to have these kind of feelings where they don't see their relatedness with others these are studies have been done on all this so right from day one in fact even before the birth why do they say you know mother should have good thoughts good feelings all of that because it impacts and this leads to experiences in the child so it develops assumptions right from there and of course what you are carrying from before that baggage also is there you will find in small children one child likes to share their things the other child doesn't want to share even though they may be twins in the same family with the same parents same environment still you find so many differences in the twins also what is that that is the sanskar that they are bringing from before no yes 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 definitely there is a difference in their uh, thinking process yes yeah thank you diti thank you very much thank you this is another example of something that we consider a reflex supposing a mosquito comes and sits on the skin you can see in the in this slide on the upper left side mosquito is coming sits on the skin now it leads to some sensation in the body right this much is happening in the body <laughs> the rest is whatever i am giving meaning to so i taste that sensation then i decide i give some meaning to it i decide what to do with this no probably i dislike the situation then i may some selection and i give the instruction to the body then the body supposing i give the instruction that hit out at the mosquito so to raise the hand and hit at the mosquito and so the body does that you can see all these steps are involved but how quickly we say that you know it's a reflex it just sits and you swat it so like that if you observe so many small things there is a loud sound how do you respond or react this has to do with what meaning you're giving isn't it somebody comes and slaps you on the back if you're in a good mood you respond in a certain way if you're in a bad mood you react and you might hit the other person also <laughs> depending on whatever thoughts feelings are going on in me so you see when i when my feeling is not ensured within me 
the outside can have a huge impact and that's why it seems like it is the outside which is driving my feeling but if my you know i have the possibility of ensuring the feeling from within and if i ensure that feeling from within then it makes all the difference then i don't get influenced by the outside then i can rightly evaluate the situation and i can respond to the situation every time this is one assignment we can try to do this observation now itself observe your expression the way you speak lengthy sentences your short expressions the way you gesture your expressions on your face as if you are observing yourself from outside as another person you don't have to do it like this um, meaning it's not like you have to be another person and all that just try to become aware of what kind of expressions you may be having what kind of ways you have you know which you don't pay attention to normally see whether you are happy or unhappy within while you are expressing and note how you react or respond to any situation whether it be behavior of another person an event outside or an event inside the body the kind of meaning that you are associating with that sensation and the sanskar associated with the meaning so this observation we can easily do and see how lot of times we react and you will find lot of times it is my state within when i am disturbed i tend to react easily when i am calm when i am comfortable within i may respond so instead of you know trying to just change everything outside if i can work on myself and ensure my feeling within then you know it can things can get set right very easily for me and i can be comfortable i can be happy at all times that possibility is definitely there okay we have been observing for about 10 minutes now so if we have any observations to share we can do that uh madam uh, actually uh, if i were the other person uh, and observing my uh, lengthy sentences and uh, short expressions the way i just uh, uh, definitely i feel uh, sub- uh, irritating for uh, speaking lengthy sentences and uh, short expressions i feel uh, the other person may be avoiding me and uh, definitely i am unhappy while uh, uh Uh, means what observing these expressions in me as if i am the other person so uh, this indicates uh, how the other person uh, generally react or uh, uh, respond to our uh, uh, behavior and our expressions that i can imagine no, point is not to try to be the other person point is to try to become aware of your own expressions yeah, yeah. your own just uh just uh, so that also you are looking at yourself from outside no? mm, uh-huh. and a lot of times we are looking outward but we don't pay attention to ourselves our you know expressions the body how we are using mm. all of that we see for other people yeah yeah so i as have... if you are other person if you see from outside mm-hmm. how your expressions are you will get a a hint of that mm mm-hmm. how you use the body lot of times you know simple thing like we were taking the example of a lizard on the wall oh now i may look at a lizard in the wall and make a face mm-hmm. but i am not even aware we saw all the steps that take place before we actually express outside through the help of the body mm. so all those steps you know somewhere i am giving some meaning to it i dislike the sight of the lizard because i have associated some meaning with it mm. that it is an unpleasant thing or i don't feel like seeing it or whatever else i may have given meaning to mm. and with that meaning 
I am expressing something outside. I am not aware of what I am feeling and thinking inside. I am not even aware of what I am expressing outside. A lot of time, somebody else who sees may be able to see that in me, but I may not be able to see it. That's why this uh, task was given. That as if you are looking at yourself from outside. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Ah, yeah. That actually I got doubt uh, while. Uh... Uh, reading this uh, assignment. So, I observed in both the cases also, <laughs> as if it is, uh, my, suppose uh, if I'm observing as if the other person observes and how is my feeling, also I observed, uh, that also I feel the same thing, madam. The speaking length like sentences, generally I, I myself uh, uh, don't like it and the short expressions also. So, that uh, reaction is there and uh, behavior of the other you have given the second one, madam, not how you react or respond to any situation. Mm -hmm. So, a behavior of the other, any event, if it is uh, compatible, then I feel more comfort. Uh, if it is not compatible, uh, I don't feel comfort. Means what? Uh, still I am with the preconditions and all. Of course. Yeah. What do I mean by compatible? Whatever, uh, yes. is, you know, somebody who is my, has yeah, my yeah. kind of opinions, yeah, and, madam, really. These are all meanings that we keep giving. And yeah, yeah. we are doing this all the time for small yeah. things. Yes, true. true. True, madam, sir. But the intensity is decreasing, madam. Nice. Yes, please. Yeah. Namaste, Didi. Namaste, Sabiko. Many times when I am observing myself, uh, I am talking to myself. Mm -hmm. So I am, sometimes I just don't understand that whether myself and there is some other entity also, you know, they are talking to there each other. other entity. <laughs> and right now when I was observing, so there was a dialogue going on within as if two people are talking. Like, how do I see things? So uh, what is this? Is it self-talk or myself is talking to itself only? Yeah. I am talking to myself. So many things are clear, you know, when I am talking to myself. See, the thing is, we are conditioned to words. We are conditioned to yes. you know, dialogues outside. So we try to reason out within also the same way. But beyond just having different kinds of thoughts, See, I can have one type of thought, then I can have another type of thought and I feel unresolved because I'm not sure what is right, what is wrong, what I should do, what I should not do. So I have all these conflicting ideas. No? These can be different types of thoughts. But beyond this, we're, our focus needs to be observing these thoughts also. Yes. This, conflict that is going on, no? Should I do this? Should I not do this? Should I? Yes. yes. I, I think there is this conflict because of this. So there is a dialogue. Yeah, but this, uh, you know, we can't resolve it at the place of the thought itself. If we observe from above, from a higher position, from the uh, pure observer point, then we can see this what is happening then we can observe the feeling also very easily but if we are just focused on the thoughts then we won't be able to see the feeling also we don't know which direction to take we don't know how to resolve things we can't really use the natural acceptance also here because the thoughts are so varied we won't be able to get the right answer so we have to come up at least to the level of feeling to be able to use the natural acceptance you see? Yeah. So yes, that yes, is that yes. should be our focus to yes. go beyond this. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Didi. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Devi Prasan Mishraji, if it is something very quick, we'll take it. We have just about a minute. Yes, Didi. <laughs> um, sometimes I have uh, observed myself that um, while I'm speaking, at the behind of the behind, uh, I am somebody observing. 
and uh, somebody that is that is me only and i have found that uh, yes i am expressing it and somebody is also observing it the same entity divided into two and uh, that uh, some experience that those type of experience i uh, come across when i am a little non aligned to the world affairs or something uh, in the remaining indifferent or something that happens many times automatically this happens i have experienced it many times uh, so uh, in that case uh, what is that actually um, uh, i am in a confusion that you have to see lot of times when we are observing even if we have conflicting thoughts we feel at ease because we are not involved with those thoughts so if you are at ease you are really observing if you are not at ease then you are just having those conflicting thoughts it's not real so it's not conflicting just observing mm -hmm. how i look it and uh, the just just the observation nothing no reaction yeah. some things are observation some things are recalling so between that you will have to see what what exactly is happening within na but you can reflect on this and see you will have to see for yourself what exactly is happening within no mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah okay thank you okay thank you tomorrow we'll start with lecture 12 thank you devi for the discussion of the all of the steps of exercise 2 thank you